Welcome. Good morning, BCOG. Would you stand with us as we sing I'll Fly Away? Church of God this morning. I'm all shaking hands. Good morning and welcome to Bethalto Church of God this morning. We're so glad to have you. I was just standing over here singing and I just got the best compliment. I was told by the teenagers that I was on key. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> because Andrea says I'm not on key, but Yes, but I just got a wonderful compliment. But welcome this morning. We're so glad to have you. If you're visiting with us this morning, in front of you is a Connect card. If you'd fill that out, we would certainly appreciate that and just put that in the offering plate. And if you're with us online this morning, we just want to welcome you. And if it's a good time right now to like and share so we can share that out. And we just appreciate that. But I'm so glad I'm here this morning. I got up this morning and I thought, it's a great day in the Lord. We can rejoice in the Lord. I had a hurt leg, but I could still rejoice in the Lord. It's a good day. I was able to get out of bed. Some can't, but I rejoice for that. Amen? Amen. So at this time right now, we're going to call the teenagers up. We have an exciting time coming. We're leaving for Teen Talent in Cleveland. If the teenagers would come on up, we would appreciate that. Come in line just right across here. We are headed to Cleveland, Tennessee in about two hours. Well, depending on Pastor, if he's long-winded, it might be. <laughs> no pressure. There's no pressure. Absolutely no pressure. We want the Holy Spirit to move, right? Yes. Okay. So we are headed out to Teen Talent. We're excited. We have entries such as we have a group video uh, uh, we also have 
a group worship song, and we have several that are doing solo um, singing. We also have um, Taylor has entered a quilt. We have other things that I can't remember everything right at this moment, but we're very excited. We want to honor our teens. I'm so thankful that we have teens that want to come and they want to join in and they want to enter and use their talents for God, aren't you? There comes a couple more. I don't know if they're all up here, but we are excited for them. So we're going to have a great week, and I'm going to call Pastor up at this time, and we're going to pray over these teenagers um, that God will just use them. And we've told them, listen, it doesn't matter if we come home with a medal. We just want to do ministry. We want to minister to those who are there. Amen? A medal would be nice too, though, right? <laughs> That's right. Well, I want to say thank you to Patty and those, uh, John and Kendra. I know have been working with her on all of this. And, you know, the teens competed back in April at our local state competition, and now they're going to the international competition. You know, literally people from around the world are coming to Cleveland this week for international teen talent, and we're excited about that. Pastor Desmond and uh, Miss Keisha are actually traveling to Cleveland this morning, and so I want to pray for them for traveling mercies. But I want to ask you as a church, if you would, I know we make you stand and sit a lot, but would you just stand up? Up as a sign of support today for our young people. I want you to stretch your hands this way, and I want us to pray over them today for God to anoint them. We know this is a competition, but it's also ministry, and we want them to be used of God to minister. So would you help me pray for them today? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray over our uh, teenagers, God. We pray, Lord, that you be with them as they prepare to travel this week to Cleveland. We ask, God, that you give them traveling mercies. We pray, God, you help them get there safely, get back safely. God, be with their parents and uh, leaders that are driving them. But, Lord, we also pray that you be with them, God, as they perform, God, the things they prepare. And I pray, God, for the Holy Spirit to just overshadow them. And God, for you to anoint them, God. I pray, Lord, that their gifts, God, would truly be used to bring glory and honor and praise to your name. I pray, God, that, Lord, you would help them, God, to have no fear, God, no anxiety. But I pray, rather, God, for the peace of the Holy Spirit, God, that surpasses all understanding to guard their heart. And I believe, Jesus, that you would use them for your glory. We pray, God, that whatever the outcome may be, we pray that through it all, you would get praised and worshiped and honored. Be with uh, Pastor Desmond and Keisha as they travel today. Be with the others that are going to Cleveland this week, God. Let it be a wonderful time of rejoicing and celebration, for we know truly you bless the church of God, and you've blessed us here at Bethalto. We thank you for these uh, young people. We thank you for their families, and we pray your mighty blessing upon them. In Jesus' name, and we say together, amen and amen. Can we give our young people a hand today? Amen. Thank you all. You can find your seats today. At this time, I believe Andrew Hunter is going to come and lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Is he in here? There he is. Come on, Andrew. Yes, remain standing while he leads us in the Lord's Prayer, and then I'll have you sit one more time. We're going to go up and down today. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Awesome. All right, you may have a seat now. <laughs> for just a few minutes um, before we get into our worship. It's that time of uh, our service uh, to get ready to prepare to give in our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. And um, just as a reminder, we have recently upgraded our online giving. And so we have multiple ways that we give here at uh, our church. We can give online at our website. You can text to give, 84321. You can also uh, drop it in the little black boxes in the foyer on your way out, or when the ushers come forward as they serve you, you can drop it in the um, ushering buckets as well. And uh, if you're not here and you need to mail it in, you can mail it in as well. That always works. Might take a little longer, but we'll get it whenever the right time is. So um, with that being said, I want to tell a little funny story because since we upgraded our online giving, if you've noticed, on the back of our pews, on the little boxes where the tithe envelopes go, we have what's called a QR code. Well, I learned a new terminology for what that is. That's called a crossword puzzle, apparently. 
when my dad was visiting a couple weeks ago while we went to Alaska, he was taking care of, you know, our kids for us and spending time with them. And I don't know what we got talking about, but he said he was talking about, oh, yeah, you take that smartphone and you scan those crossword puzzles. And we just died laughing. And so um, scan that crossword puzzle if you want to give digitally. And uh, you can give digitally or you can give, um, you know, in the other ways that I've already mentioned. But I also wanted to remind you that uh, just because it's the end of the month doesn't mean that we should just, you know, shortchange God on our giving. Um, you know, some of us pay our tithe in the beginning of the month. Some of us pay our tithe weekly, some, you know, biweekly. But, uh, you know, maybe you've already paid your tithe. But, uh, you know, you still can give in the offering and give back to God above and beyond because he blesses us above and beyond what we deserve every day of our life. Um, it may not come in financial blessings, but he blesses us. And I'm so thankful that he does. And so we can't outgive God. So continue to give to him in um, be faithful to him in that way. So at this time, as the ushers prepare to come forward and we prepare to give, um, we're also going to pray over the many needs that are represented on our screen. We have lots of uh, people and families that are in need. We have um, many who are not on that list as well that are in need of prayer. And so we just ask God to be with us today and to be with those that are in need. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and to worship you today, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to give back to you what is yours anyways, Lord. And we thank you for blessing us every day of our lives, both in our physical health, in our spiritual health, in our walk with you, Lord, in our relationships with our friends and our family, Lord. I pray that you would just continue to help us to grow closer to you and be blessed by you in those ways, Lord. But help us to be a blessing to the ministry of the kingdom. Lord, help us to give what you have laid on our hearts to give, that you ha that we would be obedient to you in our tithes and our offerings, Lord, each and every day of the year, Lord. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do in the people's lives here today, Lord. We pray that though you would meet the needs of those that are mentioned on the screen, Lord, and those that we are all thinking about right now, Lord. You know those that need a physical touch in their body. They need a healing, Lord, that only you can do, Lord. I pray that you would just reach down today and meet those needs, Lord, and heal them in their bodies, Lord. I pray that you would minister to the financial need, the spiritual need in their homes, Lord God. And I thank you for just being there for us in every situation and every trial and temptation, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this service today. We pray that you would just be on our worship and pour out your anointing, Lord, in, in the time of worship, Lord, and in pastor's message, Lord, whatever you've laid on his heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. you've given, go ahead and stand back up and join us this morning as we worship the Lord. We love you, Jesus. You are welcome in this place. God, we worship you. God, I give you everything I have, God. I lift it up to you. You are worthy. There is no one else worthy but you, God. out of the shadows, step out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid, run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you, dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is here let there be Burning, bring 
all of your scars. Come back to communion. Come back to the stars. Run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. and shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives may hold, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives may hold, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, Prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Life made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom, freedom, oh, freedom. Dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting. Dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting. Dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting. Dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting. The weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Oh, death like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Death like David, death, death like David, death, death like David, death. Death like David, death, death like David, death, death like David, death.
can hear the sound of abundance of rain. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. I can hear the sound. I want to tell you something. You know what the Bible says in the Old Testament? Has there been a drought in the land? And the Bible says that what the prophet did is he told his servant, he said, go up and look and see what you see. And he came back and he said, I don't see anything. He said, go up and look again. And he kept sending him back and finally he came and he said, I I see something far off in the distance. It's like the size of a man's hand. And you see what began to happen is as that cloud began to get closer and closer, they were no longer going to be in a drought season. But what God was about to do with what seemed a far distant off, he was about to send rain to come and quench the thirsting of the the, the land that had grown dried and parched out because of the, the drought that had been in the land. And as they were singing that song, the Holy Spirit prompted me of that story. And I felt like in the Spirit, somebody needs to hear today. You might have been going through a drought season, but God says that it's time for it to rain again in your life. It's time for the power of the Holy Spirit to be poured out. And God to bless. So as they sing that song just another time or two through, if you feel like you're dry and you're weary, what I want you to do is I want you to either come down front or right where you are, make an altar and lift your arms toward heaven like saucers and say, Holy Spirit, rain on me today. Holy Spirit, rain on me today. Holy Spirit, rain on me today. I believe the rain of the Holy Spirit wants to saturate you, to quench the thirsting and longing of your soul. Would you just cry out to him and say, lead us today in the name of Jesus. Let's sing today. let it rain today God Lord let the person who still doesn't hear it God who still doesn't believe it's a season for there to be rain in their life fresh rain God I pray that faith would begin to be stirred up on the inside today in the name of Jesus I pray God in spite of what they see God in spite of Lord how many inches of rain they're behind Lord how far they feel like they're lagging behind God encourage them right now through the work of your Holy Spirit and assure them God that rain is on the way Lord I pray today for an outpouring of the rain of the Holy Spirit God to sweep over every person every life every home every family God sweep over our church as a whole today God sweep over our loved ones today God sweep over our city God this village this community this region God we pray for the reign of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name let's sing this part here I can hear the sound I can hear the sound I can hear the sound of abundance I can 
hear the sound. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. Jesus. Oh, pour out of the Holy Spirit today, God. Help our minds to be fixed upon you, Lord. We worship and we honor you. We glorify you, Jesus. Let it rain in this place today, God. Jesus, right now. Listen, Brother Ron, I saw him standing here, reminded me of, uh, he's been in contact with a pastor in a church of God out in Albuquerque. If you've never been to Albuquerque, it's an interesting place. It's desert and green. It's all about how the mountains affect everything out there. But you know what? Do you know that God, even in a desert place, is able to allow it to rain? Even when it seems like it can't rain, God is able to make it rain. I just felt prompted to pray for this pastor. Remind me her name. I know I've messaged with her. Sister Molly Anazola in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I want us to pray for her and her church right now this morning. Shared with me sometimes all the way out there, they feel lost from the church of God. But you know what? I believe God will open up the floodgates of heaven and let it rain right there in her church today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just agree together for you to touch Sister Molly's church, God, right there. God, in Albuquerque, New Mexico this morning, God, we stand and we intercede on her behalf, God, and on that church's behalf, God. As much as we're experiencing, God, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit here today, we pray, God, for the heavens to be open, God, over that church in Albuquerque this morning. And, God, that the reign of the Holy Spirit would fall in that place. And, Father, that hearts and lives would be touched, that the pastor would be encouraged, that the worship team would be anointed, God, that everything that is said and done would bring glory and honor and praise to your name. We pray for it to reign today. God all the way there in Albuquerque, New Mexico this morning for Lord we know you're able we ask this in Jesus name in Shadabakasataya oh Kendra Payton are you here where's she at right there come here I want us to pray over Kendra you can bring your sons with you too as many of you know yesterday we had the memorial service here in Illinois for John and they had the funeral a few weeks ago down in Arkansas. But I just want to pray for the reign of the Holy Spirit to refresh you. You can tell me so. You can hear the rain. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. I believe it. You know, when you have a sick a loved one that's going through something like that, you can exhibit a great faith. Dave and Matt Nash. You exhibit great faith, Logan and Sam. But you know what? We need God to refresh us just the same. John's enjoying the presence of God today. He's hearing the best worship. Can you imagine the worship of heaven today? Can you imagine what it's like when the elders and angels and the saints all together are crying out, Holy, 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 worthy is the Lamb. All glory and honor 
God to him who sits on the throne. I can only imagine what the sound of thousands upon thousands upon thousands must sound like as they worship and bring glory to the Father today. But I want us to pray for them right now, for God to give them some fresh rain. As Kendra's already testified, she hears it. Would you stretch your hands this way, some of those near on the prayer team, would you come and lay hands on them with me, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, touch this family, God. We pray for fresh rain, God. Fresh rain of the Holy Spirit, God. God, as she testified of hearing it today, God, I pray that it would rain spiritually in her life, God. Rain physically, God, in their farm today, God. I pray, Lord, for the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God, to increase. The Lord would have me tell you that you may think that you're that, that you're able but he says my daughter you're able because I'm putting a double anointing on you I'm putting a greater anointing on you than you've ever had you're not going to walk according to your own ability your own power your own strength your own knowledge your own mind but I the Lord have anointed you would say God he would say I've anointed and equipped you for this task I knew before I ever sent you saith God that you are equipped for this task count yourself not disqualified but God says the qualifications are about to increase in the name of Jesus. Father, touch her today and let it rain, I pray, in the name of Jesus. God, let it rain in this family. God, let it rain today, God, all over their life. God, I pray for refreshing and encouraging today, God. I pray today, God, for it to rain in the name of Jesus. God, let it rain today, God. We worship you today. And Father, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. Anoint anyone else in this room, God, that needs the rain of the Holy Spirit, God, let it rain on them today. Let it rain, God. Let it rain. Open up the windows of heaven, God, and let it rain today in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, you're worthy. He's worthy of worship. He's worthy of praise. Trying to be obedient to God here. Who's worthy of worship? Would you just praise Him your own way right there? I'm going to preach on healing here in just a minute. I'm going to preach on healing here in just a minute. God has burdened my heart to preach on healing today. And I'm going to do that, but I'm feeling so stirred in my spirit that there might be someone here that has an ear issue. I don't know if you're here in the room or online, but God just is talking to me about somebody that has an ear issue. Something's going on with your ear. I just believe right now, if you would just stretch your hand toward heaven, believe in faith, God is going to heal your ear. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's an issue with hearing. I, I can't, I don't know, but God's just telling me there's somebody with an ear issue right now. He wants to heal you. Father, those that have a problem with their ear right now, God, heal it in the name of Jesus. God, you're the great physician. You're the miracle worker. You unlocked deaf ears. You opened up blind eyes. God, you caused the lame to walk again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you today. You're that person. Okay, which ear is it, honey? And they want to do surgery down in my ear. Okay. Miss Miss Betty said they want to do surgery down in her ear. She went to the ear doctor this week. She don't want the surgery. She wants God to heal her. Yeah which let's pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father, touch this ear right now. God, heal her, God. Just as you healed Brother Ken, God, Lord, heal Betty right now, God. Heal this ear, God. Let her not have to have this surgery, God. Let whatever's wrong, God, be made right today, I pray. In the name of Jesus, God, we trust in you and we believe in your ability, God, to do this, Lord. We declare, Lord, it is finished in Jesus' name. We receive your healing touch. Sataya. God, and then you're welcome, God, in the name of Jesus. Would you praise him right now for healing somebody of their ear issue, healing Miss Betty? God, we praise you today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. You're worthy. Hey, why don't you turn to two or three people and tell them Jesus is a healer. Tell them Jesus is a healer. Tell them Jesus is a healer. Yes, sir. He has an ear issue. Yes right here. Listen, I'm going to do this while the waters are troubled. The Bible's taught me one thing and my life practice has taught me at one thing and that is this. When the waters are troubled, we need to do what the Holy Spirit says. 
And right now, we're praying for ear issues. Lane has an ear issue. Oh, God, I feel the anointing. Oh, God. Father, heal this ear, I pray, in the name of Jesus. You unlock deaf ears, Father. I pray today, God, for the hearing in Lane's ear to be normal in the name of Jesus, God. For, Lord, the things he's gone through, the things he's had to endure, God, to be broken. And, Father, I pray today, for, Lord, he is fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, God. Touch his hearing and let it be whole today, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, you're in the great position, God. Heal him right now. Lord, heal him. Heal him, God. Willa, right? God, heal Willa of her ear. God, heal Willa's ears right now. <laughs> oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray, Lord, for the hearing to be normal. I pray, God, for the issues to go. God, for her no longer need hearing devices. We thank you, Lord, for those things. That, But, God, we pray for Willa. She is fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. So, therefore, oh, God, we stretch our hand toward heaven and we receive your healing touch on behalf of this beautiful little girl today in the name of Jesus Lord let Willa be made whole God in the name of Jesus my God more people with ear, ear issues yes come on how can I pray for you ma'am she lost she lost hearing when she had the baby. How old's the baby? She's been without hearing for four years. My God. I never expected that. Oh, oh, God. His presence is so strong here. Jesus. He's still the healer. My God. He just walks up in the room and he knows what we need today. Father, it's just stretch your hands this way church if you believe God can heal her ears today father ma'am I believe God can heal you do you believe he can touch your body right now heal from the top of God heal God let her be able to hear again God in the name of Jesus Lord we don't have to beg you we don't have to struggle Lord but I just pray today in faith receiving God this healing touch on my sister's life that God her ears would be unlocked and father she would hear again in the name of Lord in the name of Jesus be made whole today in Jesus name be made whole in the name of Jesus God be made whole today in the name of Jesus ringing in the ears right if you have ringing in the ears stretch your hands this way I was I, listen about this before I go on I was the other day praying and God said why do people settle for ringing in their ears why don't they believe that I can heal them of ringing in their ears and I said father I don't know so I've started praying for people with ringing in their ears I'm not trying to be boastful I'm just simply saying why do we settle for these things that we know God is able to heal I believe right now if you have ringing in your ears you ought to stretch your hand toward heaven or get down here father heal Anna right now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet God let this ringing be gone in the name of Jesus God no more ringing, God. Lord, I pray, God, nothing would cause her issue anymore in her hearing in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, God, I believe and I receive. God, touch your daughter. Receive, receive, receive. Do you, hold on a second. Do you have ringing? Who has ringing in the ear? You have ringing, God, ringing in the name of God. We receive, God, your healing touch. God, touch Blake right now. God, heal his ears. God, no more ringing, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Ringing right here, God, ringing. Father, we were, oh, ah, God, we take it, God. We take it, God. We take it, God. We receive from you, God, the healing virtue, God, that flowed by the stripes you bore on Calvary, God. Heal her ears God of ringing right now in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus somebody else Bob right now what do you need he has hearing loss 
Yes, from his brain tumor, he has hearing loss in both ears, one major, one minor. I don't know about you, but if it were minor on me, it'd be major. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch him right now. God, open up these ears. God, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, heal both of these ears. God, let hearing come back, Lord. We're not begging. We're not pleading. We're simply agreeing today, God, and know that, Jesus, you unlock the deaf ear. So unlock Bob's ears, I pray today. Father, we receive it in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Thirty-five. Listen to me. I want to hold on. I'm going to pray for you. Listen. I was studying for this message. Do you know there are people in the Bible that Jesus healed that had issues for eight, twelve, eighteen plus years, and when Jesus came on the scene, He healed them. It doesn't matter how long you've been carrying this infirmity. What matters is when the Master is in the room, He can change your situation. So. Our sister Patty here might have had 35 years of nerve damage and ringing in the ear, but I believe today that the master is in the room to heal her ears. If you believe that, stretch your hands to, towards this way as we pray. Father, we receive. Oh, Just as you touch the woman with the issue of blood, touch the hem of your garment, Lord. We stretch out our hand and we touch you today, God, in faith believing that all nerve damage would go and God, that healing would come to her body in the name of Jesus. Let these ears be made whole for your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me a little more on the microphone so I don't lose my voice, please. Give me a little more on the microphone so I don't lose my voice. Your ears. Here. Left ear expression. God, in the name of Jesus. Ringing, thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, your left is this side, right? God, in the name of Jesus, no, it's this side. Father, touch his left ear right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal God, Rich's ear right now. God, oh my God in heaven, I feel your touch, God. I feel your anointing in this room, God. Lord, you're able to work a miracle in this ear. God, do it, I pray. In the name of Jesus, God, let ringing go. Let his ears be open, I pray, to hear perfectly in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, yes. God, touch these ears. Let him hear. Oh, I believe he's able to heal you, brother. God, heal him right now. God, touch these ears. God, he's dealt with hearing loss for years. God, touch him right now. God, we know you're able. God, touch the other parts of his body that need to be made whole today. God, we receive this today in the name of Jesus. Father, God, in the name of heal. 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 Heal God Mark's ears right now. God, in Jesus' name. Oh, sweet, sweet Holy Spirit, you're filling this place. God, touch him, touch him right now. Mark, receive. God says, receive ye your healing. In the name of Jesus, take it. Take all he has for you, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. God, heal my brother of his here. God, restore, God. Let him not even have to need hearing aids anymore, God. We thank you when you give us devices to help. But this morning, I pray in Kenny's life that God, hearing would return to these ears in the name of Jesus, Lord. You are our great physician. You are a miracle-working God. And I pray that deaf ears would be unlocked this morning. And God, healing virtue would touch your son in the name of Jesus and God that he would receive God your healing touch touch this one as God in be ye whole in the name of Jesus I hear the Lord say be ye whole in the name of Jesus my God whoever thought ears were going to do this God in the name of Jesus you ought to praise him right now Listen, I want to t teach you something for just a minute. If you're some better, then you ought to praise God for that. If you're some better, you ought to praise God. But you know what? There was a man who was blinded in the Bible. 
and Jesus went to heal him. And it says that he asked him, he said, Sir, what do you see? And he said, I just see men walking around like trees. And I want to tell you something. God does not do things halfway. God does things all the way. So if you're some better, praise God for it. But you know what you have to also do? Keep on pressing in and say, Father, I want the full healing in the name of Jesus. And I believe God is able to do that. If you're 80 plus percent better, then I believe you ought to rejoice as if God has finished the work in Jesus' name. So right now, if you would, if you came up for prayer, or even if you didn't, would you just stretch your hands toward heaven and thank God for the work he's doing in this place today? Father, we praise you for the healing virtue that is flowing in this room this morning. God, you sent your word and you healed our disease. And Father, this morning, you have done a work in people's ears. And I praise you for the testimonies that have begun in this room today. And God, that are going to continue in the weeks and months and days that are ahead. We're going to be careful to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for it's due to you and and you alone, you ought to praise him, church. Just give him praise. Hand clap of praise. Jesus. Yes, what's his name? Sage. Ethel's nephew, Sage, born deaf, one years old. Let's pray for Sage. God, touch him right now. Restore his hearing naturally in the name of Jesus. Wherever baby Sage is at right now, God, touch his body. God, I believe in faith that you're going to heal this boy. God, as I lay my hand on this phone, God, I pray, Lord, you go to where he is. And God, that you'd heal him this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, we receive on Sage's behalf. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Would you once again give God a hand of praise today? Now, Patty gave me a hard time about being long-winded. I don't intentionally try to be long-winded. In case you don't know, I love preaching. And the trouble is, see, I haven't preached for like three weeks. I got a lot to say today. I'm also going to be respectful of the fact that you've been here for a while. But I believe God wants to get right back into this. But I need to build your faith. He needs to build your faith. I'm just going to try to be his mouthpiece. To build your faith to remind you that he still heals. You see, my heart is burdened today for people in this room. And people at home that couldn't even be here today because they're dealing with some type of sickness in their body. For those who may not know, Brother Don Lloyd is dealing with cancer in his body. As you know, over the last couple of years since I've been here, we've been praying and God has touched Brother Lloyd. But through a series of events recently, the cancers came back. It's filled his whole abdomen. I got a message as I was coming out. Andrea texted me and she said the family asked that we be in special prayer for Brother Don this morning. He's having a rough day. Here in just a moment, we're going to pray for him. But what I want to do before I get into telling you about how God is still a healer, I want to show you some living proof that's in this room today that God is still a healer. I want to start with Brother Ken Lewis right here. Brother Ken is 93, 4, 94. He's, you're 3, right? You're four, two. You're both four. These brothers are both 94 years old. Give them a hand for being 94. <laughs> Brother Ken, we've been praying for you and your cancer. What did the doctor tell you this week? He said they couldn't find it. They couldn't find the cancer. You hear what I'm saying? They couldn't find the cancer. I'm telling you. They couldn't find the cancer. God's a healer. He's worthy of worship. Sit down. 
let me tell you about Miss Shirley back here. The other day she stopped me. She said, Pastor, when I got back from Alaska, she said, you got to pray for me. She's like, I got a bad report. My kidneys are not doing good. They're worse than after I had COVID. She had COVID before I came. So she went to the doctor on Wednesday. We prayed for her Tuesday night during prayer. When I saw her Wednesday night downstairs at the meal, she didn't have doom and gloom on her face, but she had a smile. You know why? Because she went in there to the doctor and he was ready to do all kinds of tests. But they ran some new blood work and what they find? Everything is normal. Everything is normal. <clears throat> now, didn't you tell me that the numbers are better than before you had COVID? Is that what you told me the other day? Now, listen to this. The numbers just aren't normal, but they're better than before she had the COVID in 2020. You know what that tells me? Our God is still a healer. He touched her kidneys. They're better in the name of Jesus. God is a healer in Jesus' name. Now, Brother Lynn is up here today. And brother, you should be dead. I'm not trying to speak death over you. I'm just saying. It's what he told me. His feet were turning black. He should be dead. He had a heart procedure. Now, initially, they were going to have to put a special thing in there to help his heart pump. They're going to do some valve stuff, but through a series of events, they didn't have to put a special thing in your heart, did they? They didn't have to do the valve work like they intended to do, but you did get a triple, triple bypass. But part of the issue for the Lynn's heart was it was only pumping at what, 30%? 20%. And you know what they told me? Is that when they put that heart back in and they got it pumping again, tell them what percentage your heart's now pumping at. 60%. 60%. Now, what, what is normal? 70 is normal. 55 to 70 percent is normal. I want to tell you something. Our God is a healer today. And when they went to the when they went to the doctor this week, the surgeon released him of all restrictions except for lifting. And the little Lutheran nurse told you what? That's a miracle. It's a miracle. She said that stuff doesn't happen. I'm here to tell you, God is still a healer in 2023, and you ought to give him some praise because he's worthy of worship. My God. I want you to understand something. I'm not telling you stories about 1946. I'm not telling you stories about what happened on some mission field in Africa. I'm talking about people in the last month that God has moved in and touched their body right here in Bethalto, Illinois. Don't you tell me that God is not a healer. You ought to give Him worship. What's my point in telling you all these things? Because he still heals. God still heals. He's not finished yet. The challenge is why sometimes do we choose to settle instead of have the faith to receive? Now listen, I understand that sometimes God does heal people by going to heaven. And you know what? That's the most glorious healing we'll ever get. When we get to heaven, I am thankful that I get to trade this body in for a new one. I'm envisioning a six-pack and buff and stuff. You know what I mean. I know none of you think about this stuff. I'm only one, but I'm telling you. No more struggling with wanting to see cake and eat it and then worry about the pounds it's going to give me. I'm just saying, glory to God. Sometimes people get healed by going to heaven. But you know what? On this earth, Jesus said this in Mark, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. It says, And when he called his disciples to him, 
He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease. Now listen, I might be silly and some of you might think I'm crazy, but I'm just one of those people that read the Bible and when I read the Bible, I read what it says and then I believe what it says and so therefore, if it says it, then I believe it and God is able to do it. If you're one of those people today, why don't you give God a hand for His Word? see in the Bible God performed miracle after miracle after miracle Jesus in the Gospels performed miracles do you know what Jesus did he started his healing ministry by Peter's mother-in-law now I don't know whether Jesus was hungry or he felt sympathetic for our brother Peter but nonetheless when he was at her house she had a fever the Bible says and so what Jesus did is it says he stood over her and then he Uh, touched her and she was healed and the Bible says immediately she arose and began to serve them you see what God does is he heals our bodies and I'm thankful for probably Peter's sake that Jesus healed his mother-in-law so his wife and mother-in-law would not be giving him a hard time you spend all your time with this man Jesus and yet he can't do something for mama and in this case he healed mama but folks I want you to know today Jesus didn't stop there he was just getting started he healed a paralyzed man he touched somebody that their hand had been withered. He was able to touch the woman with the issue of blood simply because she extended faith and touched the hem of his garment. He was able to heal a man who had been an invalid for 38 years. He opened deaf ears. He unlocked blind eyes. He caused mouth, mute mouths to speak, lepers to be cleansed. Jesus, even in the moment, As he was being betrayed and arrested. And Peter got a little overzealous and cut off somebody's ear. Do you know what Jesus did? He reached up and put his hand on that man's ear and healed him and made him whole. The Bible is not even able to contain all of those that Jesus healed. The Bible even goes on in Luke chapter 4 to say that when the sun was setting all those who had any that were sick with various diseases, brought them to Jesus, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. There are countless, multiple thousands, I believe, as you study the scripture, that Jesus healed. Oh yes, the disciples only recorded a few of those healings, but there are all the others that he was able to heal. But I'm thankful today that God did not stop the healing work when Jesus went to heaven. Rather, you read the book of Acts, you find that not only was the Holy Spirit poured out, and not only was the church birthed, but do you know that one of the first miracles that's recorded in Acts chapter 5 is Peter and John going to the temple, and there sat a a beggar that was lame in his feet, and they looked at that man, and they said, brother, silver and gold have we not, but what we do have, we give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And the Bible says he went leaping and jumping and worshiping into the temple of God. We serve a God that is a healer. Do you know they would go on from there? In Acts chapter 5, the Bible says they would bring people out from all over just to lay in the streets so that the very shadow of Peter might pass over them and they would be made whole. When the evangelist Philip that we talked about last week was proclaiming Jesus, do you know what occurred in the book of Acts chapter 8? It says unclean spirits were leaving those that were bound and those that were paralyzed and lame were healed. When the apostle Paul was Saul getting blinded on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9, the Lord healed his eyes when he was prayed for. The scales fell off. Later in that chapter, a man who'd been paralyzed for eight years 
years he was healed. In Acts chapter 14, a man who had been crippled from birth was healed. In Acts chapter 19, the Bible says extraordinary miracles were being done at the hands of Paul and even the handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched Paul's body were going and being put on other people and demons were fleeing and those that were sick were being healed. What is my point? My point is this. As you study the book of Acts, you find it has no conclusion. There's no ending to the book of Acts. Why is that? Because we are still an Acts church. We are still a church that the power of God is supposed to be flowing through. The same things that occurred in the day of Jesus that continued until the moments of the early church are still able to transpire in the earth today. God is still a healer. Jesus is still a healer. If you believe that, give Him praise and honor today. But here's what you have to remember. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Jesus called the 12 together, and it says he gave them power. Now, many of you in this room are followers of Christ. That means you also are disciples. And the Bible would later tell us the same power and authority that dwells in Jesus, He has now given to you and I. And in this case, when we look at the Scripture and begin to apply it practically, what we begin to understand is this, is that in this case, what Jesus does is He gives, He offers he puts into and he places upon. You see, what's going on here is Jesus is putting the power into the hands of his disciples. And the power is to cast out unclean spirits. And the power is to heal all kinds of sickness and disease. What I need you to realize is that same power that dwelled in Jesus was not just transferred to the disciples of the first century church, but that same power of Jesus is able to dwell in you and I today as believers of him. We are modern day disciples and that power God has given to us through the work of the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, give God a praise today. But the Bible records further in Matthew chapter 10 verse 7 this. He says, and as you go preach... Say this, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let me pause right here and say this. I'd encourage you to be back next Sunday. Should the Lord allow, I'm going to begin a series called Refocus. Do you know Jesus is coming again? Let me say it again. Jesus is coming again. He is coming and the thing is, we, the church, have to operate in such a way that has an urgency that doesn't forget that Jesus Christ is coming again. We must refocus, but that's next week. But still, it doesn't take away from the message that Jesus told them to be declaring. And that message is still the message you and I have to say today. Jesus is coming. The kingdom of God is at hand. I don't know when he's coming. I know what it's going to look like when he comes because the Bible tells me all those things. But what I can be assured of is this, is I want to take as many people possible with me to heaven. And in order to do that, I have to be pointing them in the direction of Jesus. He is the only one that can save. But you see, Jesus doesn't want us to go to heaven broke down, busted and disgusted. He doesn't want us to go there healed, bound, and addicted. But as it goes on to say in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, he told them not only to be preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand, but he said, heal the sick. 
cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you've received, freely give. What well, These things are not nice suggestions, Mindy. These were not meant to me. Oh, if you feel like it, go and do it. But Lynn, when I read this, these are declarative statements of Jesus, almost as if they're commands that say, go and do these things because I have commissioned you, I have charged you, I have called you to do this. If you are my believer, then allow this these things to happen we see if we go on in mark chapter 16 verse 17 and 18 we find the bible records jesus saying that when the holy spirit has come upon you that these things you shall do signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues and then it says they will take up serpents if they drink anything deadly it will not harm them they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover you say pastor what are you trying to get me to understand i'm trying to get you to see that jesus was a healer but he's no longer walking the face of this earth and you and I are the representatives of Jesus on the earth today and so therefore we have a charge from him to let people know there is hope in spite of the diagnosis there is help in spite of the report of the doctor God is able to heal tell your neighbor Jesus is a healer I'm sorry for Janice Crow if she's here today Janice I know you hate when I make you tell your neighbor I see her right up there. I didn't know you were here. Janice, I love you. Now she's going <laughs> to... Now the pastor call you out while you're preaching. Isn't that terrible too? I'm sorry. God bless Jesus. We're getting ready to pray. Now it's one thing for you and I to be pumped up and charged up, ready to go lay hands on people. We have all these prayer cloths up here. I don't know how many times a year we have to order prayer cloths, but it's a lot. Because people want to take these prayer cloths and they want to be using them. Now, Kenny, earlier, yesterday, you reminded me of this. Sometime last year, we prayed over a prayer cloth and it went to your brother in law's neighbor. And what happened in his situation? He had stage four pancreatic cancer. Doctor said he wouldn't make it. Yeah, he wouldn't make it to December. It was early fall. Yeah. He went to the doctor, and the doctor gave him a report. And he was looking at it. He didn't really understand it, so he went to a nurse, and he said, what, what does this say? And they said, you don't have cancer anymore. Listen, I only wished I was making, the, I only wished these were made up, these are not made up stories. This wasn't 100 years ago, Sister Heine. That was last year, 2022. A prayer cloth from this church, it's not about our church, it's about the God of this church. He's the one that is able. You see, folks, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that you and I can be pumped up, charged up, ready to go lay hands on the sick, clear out every hospital. But if we look at Acts chapter 14, read with me just these few verses and then we're going to pray. Acts chapter 14 says, And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. Everybody with me? Verse 9, This man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing him intently, and seeing that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Go back to verse 9. Look at verse 9 with me. The man was listening to Paul preaching. Paul was declaring Jesus. I don't know all what his sermon was, but the Bible assures us he was talking about Jesus. We find that what the man does is he's honed in, man. He's listening to every word that Paul is saying. And not only is the man listening intently, but Paul, I believe through the Spirit is what's talking about here, recognized this man had faith to be healed. Now what does that mean to have faith to be healed? That means this. That means that I have the confidence, the trust, and the belief that God is the one that is able to deliver me out of my circumstance. 
And you see, in this situation, that man had faith. At the right time, the God-anointed man or woman of God, in this case, Paul, was there to speak life over him and help him come into agreement with the healing promise of God's Word. You see, when Paul went on in the next verse to say, in verse 10, to stand up on your feet, the man had a choice. The man could have chosen Ethel to keep sitting. Or the man could have chosen to say, you know what? I have faith to believe that what this man said is possible to be done. And in this case, he came into agreement with the promise that God is still a healer. That Jesus has transferred the authority to you and I as believers. And therefore, you know what? He said, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to be silly enough to have faith to believe that God can heal me. And when Paul gave him that, the Bible says there plainly that he leaped up and he walked. Now, could you imagine... A man that has been lame in his feet. He should not know how to walk. You know why, Lynn? What would we do today if somebody was able to walk again? Well, you need to go to physical therapy and let me teach you how to use your feet because you may not understand how to use your feet. This man didn't need physical therapy. Listen, I'm a fan of doctors. I'm a fan of nurses. I'm a fan of, you know, CNAs. We got many people working the hospital system here. Why don't you give them all a hand right now? We love people in the healthcare system. I'm not telling you to stop taking your medicine. I'm not telling you to do any of those things. So don't mistake in my words. But what I am telling you is that there's a healer. And his name is Jesus. And when he gets in the mix of things that are going on, and you and I have faith to believe that we shall receive what God has said in his word, then there's nothing that's too difficult for our God to do. And it may just so be that you don't even need to go to physical therapy but in that moment God will allow you to start putting one foot in front of another just as if you had been walking your entire life I can't explain how God does things all I know this morning is this is that our God is a healer and he's more than able to take care of whatever it is that you have going through Now, I've asked Andrea to prepare a song as they make their way back to the stage. Thank you for playing the whole time. I didn't mean for you to do that. I've asked Andrea to prepare a song. We sang this song at Tuesday night prayer meeting. Let me just remind you, we still have Tuesday night prayer meeting. Every week, 630. God still moves in Tuesday night prayer meeting. If you haven't been making it, come on out. You say, what do you do there? We pray. What is it like? Well, sometimes people share at the beginning, and then they sing a little bit with live music, and then we just have an altar call the rest of the time. I don't know how else to describe it. That's just what it is. And when God's done, we're done, and we go home. You say, Pastor, I'm going to be there an hour. Come an hour. I saw somebody yesterday at the memorial service and they were telling me about something they're going through. They said, well, I'm working on Sundays now. I can't come. I said, you know what? Come to Tuesday night prayer meeting. Let us pray and believe with you for God to heal your body. I'm believing God can do miracles, church. I wonder, as we've become so advanced in America, we're so advanced, you know what I mean? We got technology, AI, all this kind of baloney, if you ask me. There's still, when all of that doesn't work, Jesus is always there. The question I'm asking us today is why do we wait for Jesus to be the last option instead of him, cho- instead of him being the first choice? Let me say that one more time. Why do we wait and let Jesus be the last option instead of making him the first choice. If I were a Twitter guy or X, you should tweet that for me. He needs to be our first choice. He needs to be the first choice. The first choice. Now listen, sometimes he chooses to heal miraculously like we've talked about in this service. 
sometimes, like Brother Lynn, you still have to go and have a three triple bypass. But now you have documented proof that God touched your heart. Brother Jim, I didn't even tell his testimony from earlier this year. Brother Jim, raise your hand back there. Jim Simmons. He was supposed to go have a heart ablation. They got there. They had him on the monitors. The nurses said, uh, we need to talk to the doctor. Let me talk to the doctor. The doctor comes back in and they said, we're sending you home. We don't know why you're here. There's no need to do a heart ablation on you today. Listen, I'm telling you stuff. Ethel. We were praying for Ethel's brother last Sunday at the end of the service. We prayed for your brother in Oklahoma. He had a brain bleed. You left here and went to Oklahoma. You got to Oklahoma, and the nurse said, he's not responding. He's not been doing right. He's only just, you know, squeezing hand every so often. And you know what? They prayed for her brother, and they came back a little bit later. They tried to extubate him multiple times, weren't able to do it. But when they came back, after you prayed for him, he was... Talking. And who did he know who everybody was? He knew who each one of us was. He knew how he got there. He knew everything on how it happened. That we nobody knew what happened. He knew everything. Within 24 hours, God did turn the whole thing around. Listen. People don't come back from brain bleeds. Often brain bleed is a death sentence in so many cases. But that man came back and knew who he was. What is my point? You said, Pastor, why are you taking all this time to tell us these stories? Because you see what's happening right now is God is trying to build your faith. God is trying to build your faith. Not because of what I'm telling you. Yes, the scripture is true and does not return void. But right now, you're hearing testimony spoken over you of situations from people that you see, people you know that are dealing with things that aren't from somewhere back in the rearview mirror, but yet they're happening right now, in this moment, in this hour. I'm telling you, He still heals. Jesus is still in the healing business. Prayer meeting, I asked Andrea after she sang this song to sing it. I'm going to ask her this morning to sing it over us. As you learn it, I want you to sing it. But there's a part of it that says, I reach up to receive it. I reach up to receive it. Talking about healing. You see, this morning, before I open these altars again for people to come for healing, I'm going to ask you when we do get to that point in the service, that you come with a heart that says, Lord, I'm reaching up to receive. I take you at your word. I believe you are a healer. And I want that for my body, my family, my friends. If you need prayer cloths, we'll anoint as many as we have to today and believe for God to heal your family. We're going to pray for Brother Lloyd. But right now, when everyone that's able to stand and let us worship with the worship team. If you don't know the words, I want you to just stand there with your eyes closed. If you need to go home, listen. You're not going to offend me if you leave. Because I think God has a work to do in these altars this morning. If you need to go on your way to Cleveland, know I love you. I'm praying for you. Have a safe journey. But this morning, there's, there's a work God wants to do. Because he's still a healer. He's still healing. He's still moving. You know... There's another part of this sermon, I'm sorry I'm trying to stop, but in Acts 14 it goes on, after this transpired, they thought that Paul and Silas were the gods come down to visit with them. They got really anxious, and so what did they do? They ended up stoning Paul. And the Bible says they left him for dead. And what they did is it says the disciples came and they gathered around him. Now it doesn't say what they did. My inclination in thinking about what the scripture what would probably indicate is they potentially laid hands on him. Now, I'm not saying that's what the Bible says, and I'm not trying to add to the Scripture. I'm just saying it says that the disciples gathered around him is what it says. That's all it says. And you know what? Paul didn't die that day. He didn't die that day. He lived. Sometimes our situation can look like death, but when the saints begin to pray, church, I don't know what can happen when two or three agree on any one thing and we say, Father, we receive from you, God is able to do the miraculous. 
Would you right now? Let's worship. Let's worship. Let's worship. In Jesus' name, Lord, we praise you today. Have your way. I feel the glory of the Lord rising.
Andrea Payton, come here. Sing it again, Andrea. If you need healing, stretch your hands. Church, the glory of God is in this room right now. There, oh God. There's nothing he can't do right now. All those people that I asked, that I talked to earlier about being healed, I want to ask you right now if you'd come and help me pray for these. I want to ask our prayer team to come and help me pray for these people. we got uh, Brother... Um, Dennis West and his wife, they're Church of God pastors. I'm going to ask them to come and help us pray for people today. Listen, he's a healer. He's here today in the name of Jesus. If you've not come already, I want to ask you to get out of your seat and come. If all you need is a prayer cloth, what we're going to do is right over here with Sister Marlene, I'm going to have Susan give her these cloths. She's going to sit there or stand there, whatever she needs to do. And she's going to anoint a cloth for every one of you. If you want me to pray with it, I will. But I'm not the special one here. It's God's anointing that flows through other people as well. I've asked Kendra to pray for people to be healed. God is about to heal people. All you have to do today is say, Father, you're the healer. I receive it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Prayer team, if you'll help me by praying on the front side of them. Pray specifically in agreement with what they need prayer for. If they want me to pray for them, I'll come and just take me a minute. I'm going to begin by praying for Brother Keith. He needs God to do a work in his neck, to touch his heart, his body. We know God is able, brother. He told me yesterday he's been, he prayed for Ken Lewis to be healed. And we're going to pray now for you to be healed. I'm going to pray a few things on the microphone and then I want you to go back to singing that song. If you could sing the bridge specifically for a few minutes. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we receive your healing. Oh God, Baba Shandaya, God, touch Brother Keith right now from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. God, heal his neck. Heal all hurting, God, the narrowing of his spine, God. I pray, Lord, for it to open up today in the name of Jesus. God, we refuse to accept the report of the doctor that it's just old age. And God, we believe today, God, for him to be whole. No more hurting, no pain. God, let every valve of his heart work like it's supposed to. Let every chamber, God, do what it's supposed to do, God. We receive your healing touch today in the name of Jesus. We receive it. God, touch Sister Jean's back right now, God. I'm going to touch her back, okay? God, touch her back right now and heal it. 
Heal it, God, in the name of Jesus. God, remove all hurting, that all the discs, the spine, God, every vertebra work like it's supposed to, God, in the name of Jesus. Make her whole, I pray, God, in Jesus' name. Listen, I do feel right now as I was praying for her, if you have a back issue, you got some type of herniation, you got some type of pinched nerve, you got sciatic problems, whatever, if that's you, just reach your hand toward heaven, make your way this way. I'm going to pray, God, touch their backs right now in the name of Jesus. We declare healing over them this morning in Jesus' name, that they'd be whole, that they'd be complete. God, we pray in Jesus' name for their touch today. Oh, God, move. Move and heal backs today, I pray. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Jesus. Denise, since Brandon's tied up, would you come here for me to stand in for Brother Don? Church, we're going to pray for Don Lloyd right now. Denise is his niece. Judy recently told me, she said, Pastor, we're praying for a Red Sea parting type miracle. That's what we need today in Brother Lloyd's life. If you have faith to believe on behalf of, give me a cloth too. God, in the name of Jesus. Brother Lloyd, right now, God, where he's at in that house, touch him right now from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father. Heal him, oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come into agreement with every healing promise of your word. God, you sent your word and you healed our disease. God, I pray today, God, for Don to be whole today in the name of Jesus. God, for you to touch this cancer, we rebuke it. God, from every part in his body, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, do what only you can in him, God. You are a miracle worker. We trust in your ability, your power, your strength, and your might. We take heed to the work you did, Jesus, on the way to Calvary, that by your stripes we are healed today, God. And I pray today, God, that you would touch Don, and God, that you minister to him in the name of Jesus. God, I pray just as they took cloths from, from God, the bodies, Lord, of the apostles, and God, they went on the sick, and they were whole, God. Heal him, I pray, in the name of Jesus. God, minister, Lord. We cast out fear today. And we pray, God, for faith to arise. And, Lord, the enemy to be scattered in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Andrea's about to sing. Perfect love is casting out all fear. I'm going to come and pray with you. Church, if you're in the pews and you still need to come, there's still time prayer team help me pray for these people if you're in the pews just pray 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 believe for God to heal in Jesus name
person as I'm standing here holding my brother. I just feel the Holy Spirit want me to talk to somebody else that's dealing with grief today. You're sick from grief. God wants me to tell you he can heal you from that too today. If you're dealing with grief because of someone you've lost, whether you've lost them because they've died, whether you've lost them because their relationship's been broken or you've gotten divorced or whatever and you're grieving, the Holy Spirit wants me to tell you right now he's able to heal you. He's able to heal you of your grief. So if that's you this morning, I invite you to come down here and I just want to give you a hug. God, touch these people. If there be anyone in this room, God, that's dealing with grief, Lord, and the loss of someone they love, God, wrap them up in your arms today. Oh, God, comfort their hurting heart. Assure them that, God, you love them and you've not forsaken them. Remind them, God, that your way is better. We may not always understand your way, but, God, your way is better. Heal them, oh God, of that grief today, I pray. Oh, God, you're worthy of worship. Jesus, he's so worthy today. Oh, I feel his presence. Church, would you just praise him a minute? Jesus, you're worthy. for several but I missed many but right now if you're suffering from you say pastor you're being weird no I'm just doing what God's telling me he's a healer and he's in this room today if you suffer from joint issues knees ankles hips shoulders back neck whatever you need God to touch you in your joint stretch your hand toward heaven father right now touch these joints touch joint issues right now in the name of Jesus heal them God I receive healing from my own knee God I don't agree with the report of the doctor of the ACL issue God I believe that you've made my knee whole that Lord I trust in your word God that I am healed in the name of Jesus I believe with my friends God that you'd heal them right now every joint issue we pray for healing in the name of Jesus of it Touch backs, touch knees, hips. God, in the name of Jesus, touch Kay Prosser back there, God, with her issue. God, minister to her. Remove the hurting and the pain from their body today. God, I pray in Jesus' name. Listen, I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to also pray for those that are dealing with what the Bible might call spirits of heaviness. See, there's a lot of physical illness that people deal with, but then there's also emotional illness and mental illness and behavioral illness and I just want to pray for you if you're dealing with depression it's a real thing if you're dealing with anxiety it's a real thing if you're dealing with other paranoia whatever if you're dealing with these things if you're dealing with bipolar it's a real thing this stuff is real I'm not making this up Blake it's real stuff you know your family your brother's gone through stuff but here's the thing God's touched 
If you're dealing with a heaviness in your mind right now, you say, Pastor, you're going to ask me to raise my hand. I am, only because in doing so, you're doing what this song has said. You're not stretching out to me. You're not confessing to anybody except you're reaching to God and saying, God, I need your help. So right now, if you're dealing with a heaviness on your mind, depression, anxiety, fear, bipolar, whatever, would you stretch your hand toward heaven right now? Father, heal the heaviness of people's minds right now in the name of Jesus. God, I believe you sent your word not only to heal physical disease, but God, you sent your word to heal, God, emotional sickness, God, issues with depression. God, I come against these spirits that would try to attach themselves to us. I come against, God, the parts of our brain and our nervous system that are not wired correctly. And God, I pray they would all come into perfect and total alignment with, Lord, who you are. And the, the stripes you bore on the way to Calvary were bore so we might be healed. So, God, we receive your healing touch today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray today and know, God, that, Lord, you're perfect. And, God, we are made in your image. So help us, therefore, reach up and receive your healing today. In the name of Jesus, he's worthy. So I just saw this young couple here, not to call them out, but I know your sons have some type of hydration issue or something. Is that right? If you have a child that's sick, I know we prayed for Willa earlier. I want to pray if you have a child. Now, these people have like young children still live at home, elementary, junior high age, whatever, preschool. But you might have a grown child that's sick. If you have a child that's sick, would you just reach your hand toward heaven and pray on their behalf, Father, heal these children. Believe for your healing touch in their bodies right now. Touch their sons. God, their gifts from heaven, God, make them whole. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, God, we give you praise. Jesus. God, touch Will and Wells today, God. Touch the other children. God, touch other children across this room that need healing. God, heal them. Touch those watching online right now. God, heal them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. going on. Me and God are having a conversation right now. I'm trying to he's real. God in Jesus name Jesus Jesus Zach, God has a word for you. This is what I'm wrestling with. Zach and Taylor today, Father, in the name of Jesus. I feel like God wants me to tell you this. He wants me to remind you of something. He says, you are the head and not the tail. He says, I've anointed you and I've given you spiritual authority. There has been a transfer of my anointing that has come upon you, my son. And it's time once again for you to walk in that authority, that power, that dominion. It's time for you to lay hands on the sick and for them to recover. It's time for you to declare the messages that are given to you by God. He says, this is the time I've anointed you. I've equipped you. I've ordained you. I've called you. My calling and election are sure, saith the Lord. You don't need to look for man's approval, but seek my approval. Because you are equipped, you're anointed, and you are ordained, says the Lord Most High. Walk in this Most High calling would say, the great I am. Father, touch his wife. Give her favor. Help her, oh God. Jesus. He says, trust not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he's about to direct your paths. He's going to give you revelation, wisdom, and knowledge. 
feel like the Holy Spirit would have me tell you he's going to let you dream again. I don't know whether these are dream, spiritual dreams or dreams about things happening in the natural, but he says you're going to dream again. You're going to have visions again. He's going to talk to you in the name of Jesus. Father, touch this family. My God. They caught up in the anointing like this, Lynn. It's hard. Jesus. Listen, just we're in the glory of God right here. Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for one more person, then we'll see what God wants to do. to pray for Brandon his family I don't know how God's going to choose to heal brother Lloyd I prayed every day for God to heal John Payton and I know Kendra and John and the boys and Dave and Matt and everybody prayed for God to heal him how did God choose to heal John Payton he took him to heaven I don't know how God's going to heal Brother Lloyd. But what I know today is this. is God's perfect will is going to be accomplished. But I want us to pray for the Lloyd family. They've been a blessing to this church for many years. Brother Lloyd, some of you may not know, is the minister of music for a long time. I want us to pray today for this family. For God to give them the strength as they go through this fight and the Holy Spirit to be with them. Can you do that, church? Stretch your hands this way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this whole family. I start with Sister Judy. Pray for the children. Pray for the grandchildren. Pray for the great-grandchildren, God. We stand with them, God, as they go through this fight. Lord, we hate cancer. We rebuke cancer and for the Lord's life, God. Right now, we're praying for this family, God, as a sign of our commitment, Lord, to you and to stand together as the family of God, believing, oh Lord, that you'd be with them in this hour of their trial and tribulation. Touch them, Father. Be with them. Give them hope, help, and a future, I pray, in the name of Jesus. He's all you need. I'd like the Lord to remind, remind me to tell you, Brandon, of that old chorus. He's all you need. Jesus is all you need. This situation is going to make your faith grow stronger, says God. Jesus is all you need. Jesus. Father, we worship you, Jesus. Praise his name. Jesus. The glory of God is here. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, you're worthy.
Thank you, God. Just thank God for his presence today. We praise you, Lord. You're worthy of worship. Hallelujah. Well, I believe God has visited with us today. I believe his presence has been here. Let's just take a moment. God, we praise you. Lord, I pray for this week that's ahead. Lord, you know the things that are out there that could happen, that might happen, that will happen. But God, what I believe is, Lord, you prepared us this day to face whatever challenge we might encounter. Be with those, Lord, that are going to face battles this week. We pray for your help. Touch those, God, that are going to go through trials. Be with them. God, we praise you this day. Touch our youth as they travel. Be with the leaders in Cleveland. Let teen talent be anointed. God, we honor you today. Move in our services here at Bethalto. And God, we're going to be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory. Amen. I just felt led to the Lord that to let you be dismissed. I ask that you go reverently. I just want to, if you need to stay here at the altars and bask in the presence of God, by all means, you can do that. Otherwise, I hope to see you Tuesday night for prayer, Wednesday night for Bible study. In the meantime, we love you. God bless you. Have a good Sunday.